Hello again, everybody. This is Rocket Rick J18, and today I am going to talk to you about uh, my latest SGC uh, return and uh, reveal. And uh, I had two uh, that that went in that I I gave to SGC at the Strongsville Card Show. And uh, back in uh, uh, April 19th, and then another order on April 20th. And it is now May 14th. And I've just gotten back uh, at least one of them. Uh, the box doesn't really say what's in it. So I'm going to be uh, open this and opening this up right uh, now. And uh, I will... Uh, show you the cards that come out of it. So there's a... Uh... Okay, so this is going to just be one of the two orders. And... Uh... Okay. So that's the box. And here are the cards inside the box. And uh, we're going to be, uh, let's just uh, aim the, the camera down a little bit. So this is order. Uh, This is the 18 card order, which was the second of the two orders that I turned in. Um, right. So let's um, let's take this these apart here and take a look at the cards, and I'm gonna hopefully not. Disclose too much unintentionally. All right, so we got them opened here, and I'm going to turn the camera down. And we're going to look and see what we got here. Okay. And Here's what we're going to be looking at. So, with that in mind, and in the order in which they were returned, the first card is the Jim Palmer rookie card from the 1966 top set, card number 126, and that's in an SGC5, which is pretty good. Uh, bearing in mind, you know, these cards all came... Uh, from duplicates in my collection that they were never you know a featured part of my collection so uh, really pretty happy you know the centering is pretty good on this card and I think that helped an awful lot uh, overcome some of the uh, soft corners and uh, uh, you know a little bit of chipping on the side so that's uh, that's uh, Jim Palmer. Okay, the next card is also a five, and that's a 1958 Topps Don Drysdale card number 25 in a SGC five. So uh, it looks pretty good too. You know, pretty pretty well centered. 
Um, the back is uh, a little off, uh, pretty narrow on the left border and a little thicker on the right border. Uh, this was a birthday present or a Christmas present one year from my mother-in-law. So that's uh, kind of cool. Uh, here is a 1966 Topps card, and it is the Ferguson Jenkins rookie card in an SGC6. And this is the best card uh, back in terms of grade for... Uh, for this submission. And back to the 1958 set, we have a Harmon Killebrew in an SGC4. And uh, that looks pretty good. The corners, bottom corners are a little soft. Uh, maybe a bit more border at the top than at the bottom. Uh, pretty good. Uh, uh, pretty good on the back. Uh, looking, looking good there. So you know, that's a four. Uh, that's that's pretty good for my uh, my submissions. Uh, the next card is the 1978 Tops Paul Molitor Allen Trammell rookie card in a SGC five. And you get UL Washington and Mickey Klutz thrown in there for nothing. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, the next card is another uh, Harmon Killebrew, and it is a SGC 1.5. So this got knocked down quite a bit for uh, centering issues, uh, soft corners. I don't appear to be any big creases although there's there is a some uh, uh, wrinkles there right in the lower third of the card going from left up to the right and then on the back the uh, cartoon has been exposed it says who holds the who holds the National League mark for hits in a season, and the answer is can't really quite make it out. Two hundred and fifty four hits, and let's see if I can get my uh, trusty magnifying glass out here. Lefty O'Doul. Uh, and it doesn't. Uh... And Lefty O'Doul had uh, 254 hits for the Phillies. And it looks like uh, Bill, Bill Terry for the Giants, if I'm reading that correctly. What you were supposed to do was rub a nickel across that. Uh, I, don't, I don't think the nickel has anything in particular. It's a nickel or dime, it says. So... That that really doesn't matter what it, what the what the coin is, but that's uh, harm, another Harmon Killebrew. Uh, here is a 1961 Topps Roberto Clemente in an SGC three, and it's a pretty good looking card. Uh, corner wear on each of the four corners, pretty good centering, however. And the back is pretty well centered as well. And no no real problems with the back again other than the, the four corners. So that got knocked down to a three. Happy to have that. 
And the next card to show is the 1960 Willie Mays in an SGC3. And you can see right here, there's a wrinkle across this upper left corner and some surface wear, some surface scuffing. Uh, really, it's, uh, it's, it's hard for me to see how, and, and soft corners as well, but it's hard for me to see how the Clemente is a, is a, a three, and so is the maze. What do you think? The next card is a 1959 top Sandy Koufax in an SGC4. And I think that's uh, significantly better than the uh, two preceding cards that were graded a three. Um, so, you, you know, it's uh, certainly well worth uh, the grade of a four just by comparison. And you can, see, you can see the back is uh, pretty well centered along with the front. So pretty nice looking card, I think. Uh, the next card is a 1959 Topps Roger Maris uh, in a uh, SGC2. And I think you can see centerings off both top to bottom and left to right. Uh, some looks like a print mark on the uh, left shoulder of Roger, and of course this is his second year card uh, when he was with the Kansas City Athletics. Uh, here is the back of the card, and again no no real glaring issues. Uh, centering looks reasonably good. Uh, might be a little bit of a diamond cut, uh, so that's uh, that would get uh, knocked down some for that. So that's uh, Roger Maris. And the next card is uh, 1956 Tops Bob Feller in an SGC2. And you can see there are some centering issues, mostly left to right, and uh, maybe a little surface issues. I don't, I don't uh, see any uh, wrinkles or creases on the front. The back uh, looks like it's a similarly off center, and there is a. Uh, Pretty significant scuff mark uh, right here where my finger is. So you can see the line of uh, where it gets into some of the some of the ink on the on the back of the card. So uh, all in all, uh, you know, two is probably a pretty fair grade. Uh, next card is a uh, 1957 Topps Whitey Ford in his traditional uh, follow-through pose, although uh, I, I don't think I ever saw a pitcher who followed through with his feet pretty much uh, squared to home plate, although in this case, uh, Whitey's uh, uh, probably somewhere in the outfield grass. <laughs> uh, centering's an issue top to bottom, right to left's not too bad, and some corner weaknesses. Uh, here's the back of the card, uh, number 25, and again, some uh, centering issues. Uh, so uh, I'd say the grade of a three is probably uh, about the best you could deserve. Uh, I'd say there's probably some gum, uh, gum residue on the front of the card. Uh, the next card is a 1957 Topps New York Yankees team card in an SGC4. And so, you know, you're going to see uh, Mickey Mantle somewhere in there, uh, Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford, 
um, all the usual uh, characteristics of the Yankees uh, pennant winning team uh, from before 1957 and World Series. I mean, this would have been taken uh, probably uh, if, if either very early in the year or very late in the preceding year. Uh, but in any case, uh, uh, the Yankees won the World Series in 56, and they lost in seven games to the Braves in 57. This got some pretty bad centering. I mean, it's, it's very close to being miscut. You barely see some uh, some bit of the cardboard beyond the red printing that goes uh, up pretty close to the line. Barely uh, getting uh, uh, getting the uh, bottom line, which is the one that has Mickey Mantle's name in it. And uh, Mantle is uh, in the top row. And let's see if I can pick out his picture here. I say that's probably the, the mech right here under this uh, uh, dugout post uh, in the back row, right, right there where, right there where my finger is. The next card is a another 1957 tops card. Duke Snyder, card number 170, and it is in an SGC2, and you can see that there's uh, pretty rounded corners on this card. Uh, little, some little scuff marks up here, right down here as well. And the centering is uh, not bad on the, on the card overall. Card number 170, Duke Snyder. Uh, the next card is a 1960 Topps rookie card of Jim Cott. And uh, it, uh, his name is spelled correctly here. Uh, there is a, there is a, a card uh, not too, in the not too distant future for Jim that uh, has his name spelled K-A-T-T, -T, uh, misspelled. I don't think it was ever corrected. Off-centered, uh, top to bottom, right to left, um, corner issues uh, on the back side of the card, uh, still a little top to bottom uh, weakness there, um, and uh, so that's uh, that's the Jim Cott rookie card. And we have another another Sandy Koufax card, this time from 1960 tops in a SGC4. A little bit uh, off-center and maybe just a, a slight uh, diamond cut. Um, perhaps. Doesn't look so much on the top, as, but it does kind of look like it a bit on the bottom. But a, a grade of a four for this card, uh, it's not too shabby, I don't think. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. In fact, I'm, I'm pretty happy with grades so far. Um, so the next card that I have to show you is a 1961 Topps Frank Robinson, card number 360 in an SGC3. Uh, some centering issues left to right, top to bottom is not so bad, uh, slightly rounded corners, uh, no, no creases or wrinkles that I can see. Uh, here's the uh, back side of the card, centering issues in the main, uh, probably knock this down a little bit. And then finally, the last card is the 1969 Globe Imports, uh, Richie Allen, Ace of Clubs, and here is the uh, here's the card. It's a it's a smaller 
card and uh, uh, really, really like having this card. Uh, uh, 1969, of course, uh, Richie was still, or Dick Allen was still with the uh, Phillies. And I like this card, and I got it graded against the advice of uh, Orlando, who took a look at these for me. But uh, I kind of, I kind of like it. STC three. I'm very happy with that. So that's uh, that's what I have to show you on the reveal. Eighteen cards, uh, and uh, ranging from well, I think one and a half to six on the uh, overall grades and that's that's not bad for uh, cards that are uh, you know the du duplicate cards not not taken from my uh, uh, collected sets uh, <clears throat> and then I have one other card to show you uh, which is a 1950 uh, Actually, they just arrived today. 1952, card number 196, Solly Hemus. Uh, little, little bit of an issue with, uh, uh, you know, uh, top to bottom, a little side to side uh, centering, some roundness on the corners. And then uh, here I have some other cards that came in uh, earlier this week that I'll just go ahead and show now uh, to not graded. But uh, here's Pete Reiser, or Riser, not sure how you pronounce it, uh, 1952 Tops, card number uh, 189. And... Uh, Harold Patrick Riser. I'm not sure how you get Pete out of that, but it has a uh, print mark here uh, around us on the corners and so forth. But still, you know, quite acceptable for my 52 Tops collection. Here's Don Johnson, card number 190. Uh, Harry Simpson, card number 193. Uh, Phil Hogstead. Uh, Phil is card number, uh, not 100% sure, 190-something. One ninety eight. Okay. Uh, that's for my 52 Tops collection. Here's a card for my... Uh, 1964 Tops collection, and this is Bill White uh, in an SGC4, and this leaves me uh, two cards to complete this set, and they are Eddie Matthews and Sandy Koufax, and that's in an SGC4, and here is the 1994 SP Alex Rodriguez Foil in a near mint mint eight, uh, card number fifteen, and this has a facsimile autograph. Uh, this is one of the Mike Payne three hundred cards, so uh, that'll go into the collection as part of that set. And then here is a nineteen forty eight. Sport Thrills, and this commemorates the scene from the 1941 World Series, a game four, I believe. Uh, down here, this is uh, Tommy Henrik, and this is uh, Mickey Owen. Uh, the pitch was in the dirt. It got by Mickey Owen. Uh, Henrik... Uh, had swung at it for a swinging third strike. Uh, he should have been out, but the ball went all the way to the backstop behind the umpire, 
and Henrik, uh, you see him looking back to see where the ball went, and he's headed off towards first base where he reached safely. And then uh, after that came uh, the onslaught, and the Yankees won game four and went on, on to win the 1941 World Series. And that's, uh, that's the Tommy Henrik card. So those are all, all the cards that came in uh, for my collection. And uh, also the duplicated grade cards. Uh, and uh, I, that's a pretty nice reveal and pretty nice uh, pickups since my last. Uh, I've got another, got, probably got another SGC reveal uh, to do here in uh, a few days, maybe maybe tomorrow even. So uh, that's what I have for you. I appreciate your time and interest in watching this video. Um, and in the meantime, uh, until next time, this is Rocket Rick J18 saying, wishing that all your collecting dreams come true.